Good morning everyone. This video is going to be following the manual for a tune-up and adjustment of the idle timing and uh, fuel circuits of the Yamaha 30D. This particular engine is a Yamaha 30 DMH. It does not have power trim and tilt and it does not have electric start. For some familiarization on how this engine works, we have three very basic carburetors. I'll just put it in gear so you can see the full throttle range here. At low throttle, you can see that arm moving at the moment. That's actually advancing the timing. So it has slightly retarded timing um, while at idle. And then the timing begins to advance until it picks up the actual butterflies of the carburetors there. And then obviously, once that becomes completely open, that then lets us roll and completely open up the th throttles. So as part of this, it's good to verify that all parts of the system are well lubricated and everything's free to move before we start anything else. The majority of this procedure could be completed with basic hand tools such as screwdrivers and spanners. The three tools that a specialiser you will require are a tachometer to measure RPM, a timing light and a dial indicator. I'll put a link in the description below to a PDF copy of the maintenance manual. I found these extremely useful and detailed from Yamaha and have a lot of specifications and diagnostic procedures for these engines. The first thing that I like to complete is the throttle cable adjustment. To do this, we set the shift lever in the forward position. We then twist the throttle to the fully open position and we check to see if the center of the throttle roller lines up with the wide open throttle mark on the throttle cam. If they're not lined up, we just need to loosen the lock nut on that right hand side pull wire and adjust the length until they align. Once that's completed, we then have to adjust the left hand side, the other side, to get three millimeters of slack in that return wire. As you can see, mine does not line up with that mark. So I need to adjust the pull side of the cable. Now the mark is aligned on full throttle. We need to adjust the return side wire. So there's three millimeters of slack in the cable, which I'll complete with a rule. It's quite hard to see, but uh, I've adjusted that to what I believe is approximately three millimeters of slack. Okay, so now we're at the more interesting parts of the adjustment, I suppose, now that we've got some of the basics done. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna sync all three of these carburetors so when closed, all of the butterfly valves are closed. You don't have one carby feeding more air and fuel into one of the cylinders on idle. We're zoomed in now on the number one carby, and this screw here is the uh, idle adjust screw. So what we do is we wind this all the way out so there's no tension. You can see there's no tension now being applied to this linkage. So you just back that right off so this linkage is free to return to centre. The next thing we want to do is loosen these two screws here. So these are a left-handed thread. So you actually turn clockwise to loosen. So if we put that in position there, you'll see that's loosening now. So that's now loose. So we do that on number one. We also do it on number three. So now that we have these two linkages loose compared to the uh, actual butterfly in the carb, what we do is we lightly apply some pressure to the return side, so pressing this way on the center carby, on the roller, and then we tighten these. Once again, these are a left-handed thread, so we're actually going anti-clockwise to tighten. Snip those back up. So now, with the center carburetor in the closed position, we now have closed position of the two other carburetors. Next we're doing is setting the timing plate. So we need to remove all three spark plugs, which is a good opportunity to check the spark plug gap. So 
So here I've got some uh, feeler gauges and just checking, that's perfect. That's for one millimeter for this engine. Now we can begin the ignition timing adjustment procedure. There are three parts to this. The first is verifying that your timing plate is correctly aligned. The second is setting the fully advanced timing and lastly, the fully retarded timing. We'll first start by verifying that the timing plate is adjusted correctly. I've set up a dial indicator in the number one cylinder here. Dial indicator is the preferred method. If you don't have one, you could use a vernier calipers. However, it's hard to interpret with the depth and the manual does call for two decimal places in this measurement, 3.55 millimeters. So I assume it has to be that accurate. So the setup here at the moment, the engine head and blocks all aluminium. So um, finding some steel, which is this lifting point here. I've used my magnetic mount onto there. I have put some tape on it just in case I knock it. I don't want to drop my uh, dial indicator to the ground. So what you'll see at the moment is I've actually picked up top dead center. So if I rotate this, rotating the flywheel clockwise so you look from above, because that's the way that allows the water pump to spin in the correct direction. Spinning it backwards may damage the water pump as it flips the fins around on themselves. So now if you see me scroll around now, you'll see the point where the piston begins to come up and we begin to read on the dial indicator. So that's that point there. And it'll continually clock around until we reach top dead center, which for here, I've zeroed and it's just below five. So where we actually need to set the engine is 3.55 millimeters below that. So for me, on this dial, position myself over here so I can see better, where I need to go to, as I said, it was approximately zeroed and on the five millimeter mark. So I need to go down back to somewhere between one and two, and then 0.55 away from that zero. So if I go to the four five past one, that should be correct. Continue to turn until we pick it up. Should be pretty close now. So I go past one, increase. Here's a closer look at the dial indicator. As I said, this is 3.55 millimeters before top dead center on the number one piston. So what we're actually checking here is that this pointer here aligns with 25 degrees before top dead center. The markings are on the flywheel here. It's hard to capture with the camera, but my uh, pointer lines up perfectly, which is what you'd expect uh, from the factory. So. This step is only to account for if there's been any um, big knocks around that pointer or anything like that, but I think it's still good to verify before you undertake the other steps to know that you're working with the correct timing. Leaving the timing in the same position it is, which is 25 degrees before top dead center, we now need to set the fully advanced timing position. Our next task is setting the magneto control lever, which is this one, to the fully advanced position. We'll be aligning this line and that line on the flywheel. So what I like to do here is rather than push that by hand, once again, we're in gear, it's actually to twist the throttle and that will take us to the fully advanced position. You can see that's where the throttle takes over. We're fully advanced here. We'll adjust it slightly so that aligns. Simply undo the lock nut. Now, one needs to go out slightly. So you just pop these little joints off. Take it out two turns. And pop it back on. Just double check that's in the fully advanced position. So that's now perfectly aligned for me. So I'll do that lock nut back up. cycle that a few times to make sure we're reaching the correct position, which we are. For the next step, we're setting the fully retarded position for the timing. We now have to rotate the flywheel until we're five degrees after top dead center. So using that pointer, 
and on the scale, you once again rotate the engine clockwise and looking from above. We're at five degrees after top dead centre. So what we're doing now is before we were setting it at the fully advanced position, now we're gonna set the fully retarded timing position. So make sure that throttle is closed and the lever is back. So what we need to do here is align the two marks on the flywheel again, and we can adjust it here if we do have any discrepancy. Mine's very close, but I can see that I need to actually turn it in slightly to bring that a little bit forwards. That's now aligned. So I do this lock nut back up. And that's the fully retarded timing position. Now that we've set our timing, we're going to set the idle circuit mixture screws. So there's three screws, one per carburetor, which is located here. There's a slightly different setting for all of these. They're all plus or minus a quarter turn, and the factory setting is three quarters of a turn out, one and three quarters of a turn out for number two carburetor, and one turn out for number three carburetor. So now to set these, what we do is we, using a small screwdriver, we turn them all the way in until they're lightly seated. So you should feel a slight resistance. And then from that position, you count out the amount of turns. So that's a half turn. And now three quarters of a turn. For the next, we have one and three quarters. Once again, we tighten it all the way in. And we count out. That's a half. That's one. That's one and a half. And that's one and three quarters. For the last one here, we just have one turn. So we have half turn out, and that makes one turn out. Our next task is going to be with the engine running and allowing it to warm for a few minutes, we'll be setting the idle screw stop. So what that does, if I tighten it here, is you'll see that it begins to crack open all of the throttles of each carburetor. So I'm just gonna set that for now where it slightly opens it to allow the engine to start warm. And obviously put our spark plugs back in. And obviously need to hook up our water as well. So we're doing this outside. So I've let the engine warm for a few minutes and I'm now using the tachometer to set the idle speed. Personally, I like to have an idle approximately 800 to 850 RPM. The manual specifies 750, but I just find it to be a little bit higher, just runs a little bit smoother. Our last step in the process is to set the pickup timing. This should be done after the idle speed has been set. The pickup timing is effectively when the roller on the throttle cam is picked up at what advanced timing. So what we need to do is slightly advance until we are at two degrees after top dead center. So that is two degrees retarded timing. And then we will set the roller so it is lightly contacting the cam. So what I'm doing here is using the timing light to slightly as I turn the throttle, advance the timing till it's at that two degrees after top dead center. 
this video here is just showing that's the role that we're talking about. So it needs to lightly touch that arm to the left. And to do that, we loosen that middle uh, carburetor linkage adjustment screw. And at that specified timing, we then adjust it so it's lightly contacting um, at that point. So you should see once slightly contacting, it's a bit harder to roll that roller around. So that's me adjusting it there. It's a bit hard to explain, but once you actually do the task, I'm sure you'll understand exactly how it's meant to be. Okay, so that concludes the video on the tune-up of the Yamaha 30D. And it's now time for a beer. I uh, hope that this video helps someone, gets their outboard running right, or at least helps them progress with the diagnosis of any problems. I quite enjoy making these videos as uh, I find them a great resource. So when I can't find too much online about a certain topic, I like to create a video. So thanks for watching.